Well, I'm a very long-standing Danish politician. I've been working as Minister for, for Finance, Minister for Foreign Affairs, I've been Speaker of Parliament for the last past year. I was the President of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And in, in that capacity, I have been working very much with uh, the uh, follow-up for the 17 goals for sustainable development and the climate agreement being passed in, in uh, December last year. Uh, and the technology aspects of these grand design for a better future is, of course, crucial important. What Ban Ki-moon already saw 10 years ago when he was appointed Secretary General was that this is maybe the most urgent of existential problems for the coming generation. I mean, if we are not able to cap uh, global warming at less than 2%, uh, 2 uh, degrees Celsius, uh, we know from a rather unified scientific community that it will be an accelerating global warming. And we can, uh, we can see that uh, sea levels will rise, gletsiers providing uh, water for maybe a billion people will, will, will disappear, uh, deserts will increase, and hundreds and hundreds of millions of people will, have, uh, uh, will be forced to migrate, to migrate uh, which will cause new conflicts, new costs, and which will make it even more unthinkable that we could be able to mobilize all the goodwill and all the resources for eradicating extreme poverty, hunger, and so on. So there is this interaction between all the global goals and climate as maybe the most urgent and most decisive uh, uh, area to act and to act now. It's a, it's a problem for the economic, social and environmental stability uh, and a very serious one. Uh, and, and, and I think that the best way to, to illustrate that is, look at the world today. We have an increasing number of deadly conflicts, vicious, deadly conflicts and associated humanitarian catastrophes. But we also have uh, quite a, a number of humanitarian catastrophes linked to climate change. I mean, there is hunger in eastern and southern Africa uh, for many people right now, which is the beginning of a, 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 a much stronger change in climate, uh, which will affect many more people. So if we are not able, in a decent and effective way, to take care of those who are displaced because of conflict or climate change now, and or in a, a vulnerable humanitarian situation, how should we be able to be uh, uh, to, care, to take care of hundreds and hundreds of millions of people that will come in the same situation in the, in the coming decades? In the coming decades, that's that's the, the the reason, the most important reason why we have to act now. Of course, there are a lot of other aspects of this uh, species disappearing. Uh, 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 environmental catastrophes of a different kind also uh, but but this human catastrophe mm -hmm. destabilizing the whole globe is very very uh, crucial uh, the Paris Agreement was a, a great leap forward the most important one we ever had uh, and it was it was uh, created through national commitments to act but what we know is that even if every government on this globe live up, lives up to its oblig self-imposed obligations, it's not enough. What, what we have to find out from uh, the Marrakesh meeting right now, the COP22, and, and five, four or five years from now is how do we mix an increased political ambition with uh, uh, increased technological uh, capabilities and tools. And that's exactly what we expect we can do. Uh, we, we think that technological development in these areas are moving so quickly that with uh, the sufficient political determination to benefit from that, we can actually meet the ends. We can actually have the necessary amount of action the necessary number of tools to stabilize climate 
at less than two degrees Celsius over the pre-industrial age. But we are in a hurry. We have to do things very, very quickly. We have to be sure that the right innovation is supported, there are incentives to do it. Uh, we have to in, 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 uh, involve politically ourselves in creating the price mechanisms and other kinds of regulations and incentives and taxations that support this. I am I'm very uh, uh, sad to notice that the present government, uh, I think, has a totally wrong uh, understanding of the interlinkage issue. We will not be able to have a stable economy in the future if we don't give high priority uh, for the, the change to support climate stabilization and more sustainable development in general. And another experience we already have uh, is that if we have high demands for ourselves to live up to the necessary changes uh, in the, on the marketplace, uh, in the political regulations, we are also able uh, to, to gain uh, a better economy from that because we will be still have the possibility of being in the forefront in those new products and technologies that the rest of the world to an increasing amount will ask for uh, to be able to live up to the climate change uh, and sustainability goals. So uh, it's the other way around. It's not that we can't afford doing the right things. We, we cannot afford not doing the right things. And it's a good, stable Danish experience from the last couple of decades that if we have high ambitions for ourselves, we will also create those uh, niches in the world market where we can earn money and get jobs. Uh, that, that we actually uh, see governments built on the ambitious understanding from, from Paris and from New York in, in September, uh, building uh, the alliances between the public sector and the private investors, the small companies, the big companies, the pension funds, whatever, uh, in order to, to mobilize both the willing, the willingness and the resources for all those investments in change of energy supply to renewables, of production methods to less uh, uh, material demanding, uh, to, to uh, also to try, to try to change uh, in a silent but effective way uh, the, uh, the uh, way of, of action by consumers mm -hmm. to, to, to support a more sustainable way of consuming. And I, I think there is a lot of attention, but I think there needs to be a very strong political Mm. underpinning of this attention. I, 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 I don't even uh, try to comprehend what would happen if Donald Trump w was elected President of the United States because all the, the, uh, the whole house of cards we have built uh, in the agreements in September and December last year uh, in the United Nations will fall together if there is a climate denier US. as president of the biggest economy on this globe. Uh, we, 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 we only got the uh, Paris Agreement because the two major economies, China and the United States, worked together, pushed their friends and allies, more and more uh, uh, insisting to join in on this agreement. And we need the continued pressure from Washington and Beijing uh, to make this happen.